<laughs> you also note in your paper some of the uh, the weaknesses that Taiwan faces. Uh, that uh, right because. Yes, they've been preparing for 70 years, but that all requires a lot of maintenance and ongoing effort. So what are some of the weaknesses on the Taiwan side that uh, we have to be careful of? Right. And um, going back to your point of what, what could be a, an unintended consequence of the U.S. Uh, deploying troops or providing kind of a, a stronger security guarantee to Taiwan, one of the largest issues <laughs> is that the Taiwan likes to free ride on the U.S. Um, they have on paper a very large capacity. Um, the, for a very long time, they had a draft, and on paper, they could call up two million troops and an additional million civil defense personnel and contractors and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, so that's all great, but when you actually kind of look under the hood, Things are quite a mess. And I cite this recent Wall Street Journal article that was kind of hilarious in a dark way, <laughs> where they're like, uh, uh, ta young Taiwanese people will stuff themselves to get fat <laughs> so they won't have to qualify for uh, military service, which has been reduced from, I believe, two years to four months. <laughs> and lots of People are like, yeah, I spent four months watching American war movies, raking leaves, and moving old tires around. So uh, it's questionable exactly how effective the, the vast human wave that they anticipate having at their disposal would be. Um, additionally, a point of concern is their equipment acquisitions from the U.S. and what that says about their mindset and strategy. Uh Currently, the Taiwanese strategy basically involves trying to, of course, destroy as much of a Chinese invasion fleet uh, across the horizon before they get to Taiwan as possible. They'd be, they'd be mining the strait, they'd be deploying their air force, they'd be, their navy would be sallying forth, they'd, they'd be attacking mainland China with missiles. Um, and their basic strategy is try and destroy as much as possible before it lands on Taiwan. And they have many advantages in that there's not really going to be a surprise as to where the Chinese land. There's only so many beaches. Those beaches have been mapped out for decades. And, uh, you know, every path from that beach to Taipei and inland is mapped out with defenses and whatnot. Um, and they're kind of the penultimate stroke of their strategy is that if the Chinese manage to secure a beachhead, which there's lots of reasons to be skeptical they could do that, basically on the morning of the second day of the invasion, Taiwan would just overwhelm the beach with basically a massive attack of armored tanks and just massed infantry. And something I, this has been attacked as being not realistic by other writers. Um, but I point out that um, there's reasons. Uh, uh, technology is changing so rapidly, and we've not really been fighting. Uh, no one's been fighting really modern warfare. Uh, we've been fighting, you know, the U.S. certainly hasn't. We've been fighting, you know, uh, guerrilla warfare in Iraq and Afghanistan or just pounding the heck out of people who don't really have any air defenses. Uh, but the, uh, if the listeners aren't aware, there was a brief war between Armenia and Azerbaijan last year. And one of the main takeaways from that war, where Armenia was kind of crushed, uh, they were crushed in large part because all the Armenian armor was obliterated by Azerbaijani drones, um, which are very inexpensive. So it's questionable just how feasible armor, the future of armor on the battlefield, and whether or not uh, the Taiwanese military leadership is actually serious about confronting the realities of contemporary warfare, or if they're still stuck in this mindset <laughs> where in previous decades the Taiwanese Navy and Air Force could do whatever the heck they wanted, because China, even like until the early 90s, was not on par with them. That that era is long past now. 
And part, I would argue, of what underlies this mindset is uh, just a expectation that the United States will save the day. And I cite polling that <laughs> backs that up. Over half the Taiwanese say, uh, well, a, vast, a lot of what Taiwanese say if China invaded, they would fight to defend Taiwan. But they also say, but the United States and Japan will swoop in and the war will be over really fast. <laughs> so uh, it's questionable how prepared they are uh, if the rubber hit the road. <laughs>